young man. Bishop James introduced to me. Very, very gifted young man. Very gifted. And I think one of the dangers we all make in life eh, is to follow or accept people who are gifted without accountability, supervision, and authority. It's very dangerous. As long as you live, take this from me as your father. Never get too impressed or follow or engage anyone gifted without spiritual supervision, accountability, and authority. They are dangerous people. And I introduced him to a lot of my contacts in America. After a while, a lot of my contacts won't return my calls. They won't deal with me. They won't respond to me. And I didn't know why. Then I found out later that it was this young man, very gifted, that I opened a lot of my contacts to him. He was undermining and destroying and poisoning them about me. I didn't even know what he was telling them about me, whether I was this or I didn't know. And they wouldn't deal with me. It was tough. It was difficult. And for two years, I was in pain, deep, deep pain, because he was a young man, short like that. He died recently, you know? And I couldn't fight him also because he was my son. And I couldn't also go around telling people bad things about him because fathers don't do that. It was tough. And for two years, I was praying. Two years, I was praying. And there was one song that kept coming throughout the two years. Every time I would pray and I would speak in tongues, that song would come. I was in London yesterday. And no, I was in Germany. I was in Germany praying. And then the song from nowhere came again. Then I got to London yesterday, the song came again. So I knew God was saying something. Lift up your hands. Listen, you need to sing this song. It's coming from some deep wells. I haven't sung it for over 10 years. And it just came from nowhere. God is saying something. Lift up your hands. Do you believe it? Sing it like you do. You know, it's a prayer song. Bro. I'm telling you, two years. All I did was to speak in tongues and sing this song. People would come to say, Papa, what is going on, Papa? And I, I said, I don't know. I have nothing to say. I didn't know what to pray for. I just spoke in tongues. Speak in tongues, then this song would come with tears going through my eyes. And at the end, the Lord avenged and vindicated me. Amen. It was power, it was painful, but I grew. I became better. I became wiser. 
And this time I look at people, very gifted people, and I look at them and I say, you, you are poison. Your gift don't impress me without character. If you are gifted and nobody holds you accountable, you are Lucifer's grandson. So that's what happened in heaven. Lift it up one more time. Now, lift up your hands. You came early than everybody else. Don't waste their time. There is no minute that must be wasted in the house of God. You are gathered around the altar. Cry out. Lift up prayer. And let the Lord do something unique in your life today before the end of this service. Lift up your hands. Somebody, just cry out to God in your own way. You can touch the altar. You can stand. You can kneel. Whatever. Just feel free. You are in your father's house. There are no restrictions. No restrictions. Do whatever you feel like doing. You are in your father's house. This is daddy's house. So cry out. Tell God I want an encounter today. This week, touch me. Impact my life. Avenge me. Vindicate me. Intervene. Turn things around. Turn the tables in my favor. Let the tables turn in my favor. Let unfavorable condition turn in my favor. Let circumstances turn in my favor. Lord, it is time. It is time to avenge. It is time to vindicate. It is time. It is time to shine forth in my life. It is time to silence them that speak evil and ill of me. It is time to shut the mouths of lions. It is time to shut their mouth. Yea, it is time. It is time to make an end. Lord, to the affliction, to the mockery, to the arrogance, to the haughtiness and to the pride of the wicked. It is time to take away their defenses. Who think they have made it and arrive without any regard for you, Lord, and for humanity? Take away their defenses. Remove their strongholds. Yea, let the basis of their confidence be shattered. Shatter their basis of confidence. Take away their power. Take away their strongholds. Take away their monies and defenses through which and by which they boast and despise the poor and look down on others. Yea, take away their defenses. Let them know that they are men and not God. That thou alone art God. E tu kadila satan. Male tu kadila kus satanda. Wasinda la hasan. Ketunda basilandu makasind. De kitunda kasan. Ekinda kasunda limahan. Falahanda ku wasan. De tu kadila kasan. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth. Let your defenses be taken away. Let your defenses be removed. Yalika tunda kasinda la Eka di lokosi da kaza Push it, push it, push it There's a prayer I want you to pray.
two things. Number one, number one, there was a time when Saul was seeking to kill David. And David ran to go and hide. And when the people of that area, when they heard that David was taking refuge in their city, they sent a word to King Saul and said, David is hiding in our city. We don't want trouble with you. Come and get him. So Saul gathered an army on his way to go and capture David. The Philistines came and attacked his palace. So a messenger ran to tell him that, hey, Saul, there is trouble in your house. There is fire in your house. Leave David alone and come and sort out your problem. So the Bible said he left David alone and went back to fix the problem in his house. There's a prayer I want us to pray this week. That those who trouble us and our house, let there be fire in their house. Let there be trouble in their business, in their house, that they will leave us alone. Pray that prophetic prayer right now. Let there be trouble in their house. Let there be fire in their house. Yea, let their strongholds be abolished. Let their defenses depart from them. That they might leave us in our house alone. Let there be no rest nor peace for them within their walls and their palaces and their strongholds. Yea, let their fortresses be demolished. Let their defenses depart from them. Let their confidence be taken away from them. In the name of Jesus, make them as orent. Yea, make them as chaff. Make them, yea, as smoke before the wind and as wax melt before fire, so let them perish that seek and desire the head of your people. O oh Lord our God, thou that hearest and answerest prayers, bow your ears, attend and hearken. You that created the eyes, you see all things. You that created the ears, you hear all things. Arise, O oh God, to the cause and defense of your people. Do a new thing. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Maliku takada gaza. Eyala kutuki wakasalaha. Eyanda kutadi kasi damada haya. Elei mikatunda kasi. Delaya kutun kadila. E kadila kasulun walasi ama. Ame tu kadi kalun. Kepandi kasun na kasilim. Beli katunda kasalan. The Halan, the Hawan, the Kansi Lambu Tali Kalams, the Katula Kasalama Dus, Limila Katunga, Pali Makutu Kasa, the Katala Kasa, the Layama Kindi Mahaya, the Kalinda Kusamadan, the Tukati Kasin, the Kondi Kasim Kalama Zumba, Babasi Mulama Sadaya. Hey, Kada, thou that heareth prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. We come, O oh Lord, we have come. We have come with our prayers. We have come with supplications. We have come with intercession and atonement. Lord God Almighty, your people have come. Masia. Hear me. Hear me. It's very important. Pray this one prayer. The Bible said they meant it for evil, but God turned it for good. I want to pray a prayer for this week. This week, I want to pray a prayer. Let the tables and let circumstances turn in our favor this week. Any condition that is unfavorable, let it turn in your favor. At home, at the marketplace, at the workplace, wherever you go, Whatever concerns you, that has been turned against you. Anything that is in opposition to you, let it turn in your favor. Everybody do this. Somebody say, turn it, Lord. Ay, 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 ay. Turn it, Lord. Turn it, turn it. Turn the tables in our favor. Put your hands down. Pray that prayer, Lord. Turn it. Turn it. At home. For our children our grandchildren, 
our circumstances, our nation, our health, our finances. Turn it, Lord. Let it turn. Turn. Turn in our favor. Let it turn in favor. In favor of your people, Lord. Turn it, Lord. Turn the evil in our favor. Let the evil turn in favor of your people. Let it turn. Let it turn. Let the evil turn. Let the tables turn. Let circumstances turn. Let unfavorable conditions turn in favor of your people, in favor of this house, in favor of your servant, in favor of your anointed, yea, in favor of your chosen. Lord, let every unfavorable condition at home, at the workplace, at the marketplace, at school, in the life of our children, sons and daughters, grandchildren, let it turn in our favor. Put your hands together and let it turn in favor. Let it turn. Turn. Turn it, Lord. Now, lastly, the world is in trouble. The world is in big trouble. Trump may come back. I'm not speaking prophetically. I'm using my human senses. So don't say I prophesy. It's not prophecy. You must know prophecy and then when we are just ourselves. Can I be myself? Okay, so if you hear anything contrary to what I'm saying, speak out because you were here. You hear me? Will you do that? In the event that Trump's come back, there's a possibility that there might be a civil war in America. Because Trump is a, he's a nationalist. He's not an internationalist. He really believes America is being cheated and America must stand his ground. Now, a few weeks ago, the federal government sent some soldiers to go to Texas to arrest the situation. Trump told the governor to resist the federal government. So when the federal government troop gone, went there, the governor of Texas told the army in Texas, resist them. That has never happened before. That is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, if civil war happens in America, there's a possibility that a lot of Africans in America, Ghanaians, will have to rush back home. People that are talking in Ghana, threatening on social media about power violence, you don't understand what war is. Some of you should go online. Check what happened in Celerion, in Liberia, in Rwanda. In 90 days, one million people died in Rwanda. Look at the pictures. Try to understand. Ghanaians, you are naive. You don't know anything about war. And if you look at what happened in 79, 81, in Ghana, the same Ghanaians who, who are nice people and gentle people. When demons enters you, you become insane. Eh? You go off mentally. We want to pray against strange fires. We want to pray against the foolishness and the violence. Eh? On social media, in this country, people don't know what they're talking about. Because when things get out of hand, when a demon enters people, and people lose their thinking and senses. You have no idea what you are talking about. And may people be warned by the angel of the Lord. May the Lord strike them and their household all in well. Who are threatening to endanger the peace of this country and the security of this country. Let something take them out. They have no idea what they are talking about. I'm telling you. It's very dangerous for people to just get up and just talk without thinking. The implications are serious. Check Celerino, Liberia, Rwanda. Look at other countries. It's not a joke. You see what's going on in the Middle East with Israel? Over two, 300, uh, I think, rockets or whatever have been shot into uh, Israel. You don't know what is going to happen. The world is sitting on trouble. 
in Africa must be careful. Because we, we don't have, a, America won't support us though. If you think the West are coming, you are joking, you politician, don't be fooled. Nobody is coming for us, we're on our own. If you think, oh, they, are, they, they don't believe in us. They believe in our minerals. That's all. We don't exist. So stop all this foolishness that the Americans, the British, the this have called us. They are talking to you. What are you? You are joking. I've dealt with them for over 40 years. They are not interested in anything. We are on our own. So we must be wise. Lift up your hands. Pray for Ghana and Africa. Lift up prayer. Father, Ghana, we quench strange fires. We quench fiery dust. This is a prayer you have to pray strong. This prayer you must pray very strong. Put your hands together and lift up prayer for Ghana and Africa. Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. Africa, Africa, Africa. I'm not feeling your prayers for Ghana and for Africa at all. If you love this country and continent, please pray. God is the only helper we have. He's the only shield we have. We have nobody. Nobody cares for us. We are on our own. If you think anybody cares about us, it's a lie. They don't care about us. We are on our own. If you look at the pandemic, COVID-19, you will see that truly we are on our own. Nobody cares about us. God is the only helper we have. God is the only shield we have. Emila kusali kamala sa, se la kutu kili kasalama sa, samala kutu kawasa dalia, e kitu kali kasalama hada, e katunda kisu mande kasi, me la kindo kusi mili masa. Listen, America and Europe allows children from the age of six years to choose to change. They are DNA to choose to change whatever gender they are. So if a boy feels he's a girl without the permission of their father and their mother at the age of six, they can choose to change their gender from a girl to a boy or a boy to a girl without the parents' approval. Anything else, they need parental approval, but that they can do. And this is to warn all of us who send our children abroad to go to school. Oh, my child is in Yale. You are sick. They'll come back with brothel and something else. My child is in Harvard, Princeton, Cambridge, Oxford. They come back with Oxford English and they say, Mommy, my breast. Your son is saying breasts and speaking Oxford English. That's what you want. Go ahead. We are sick. We must have everything here. Yes, sir. You see what the UAE are doing? The world is moving to that side. They are very smart people. They are building their own culture and own community. Dubai is a population of 10 million and the citizens are only 4% and they control everything. Africa, we are still subjected to slave masters. Everything white is correct. Everything black is wrong. That is how sick we are. Lift up your hands. Say, Heavenly Father, change our psyche. Change our thinking. We destroy programmings. Programmings of generations that has held us as ransom to the past and making us seed and sacrifice potential leaders of tomorrow's destinies. In the name of Jesus, help us to break free from mentalities and programmings 
that will not allow this continent to rise. Put your hands up. Pray that prayer. In Madonna. Thank you. Thank you. Please go back to your seat. Anytime you come, instead of sitting down, just come to the altar and pray. Every minute you have used in prayer will yield, will yield a fruit result for you this way. Put your hands together. Let the choir come right now. Are you clapping? Your clapping is very suspicious. I, I haven't seen you for some time now and I'm just seeing you and you are not even happy to have me around. Eh? Look at the way you are clapping. After all this week, I've missed you. Eh? I don't know, I don't know what you've done to me, but I really love you people and miss you big time. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a good praise and worship. Scream, shout, do something.
And a blessed morning to you. We are broadcasting live from Action Chapel International, Prayer Cathedral off the Spintex Road in Accra, Ghana. It's a blessing to have you with us. And on behalf of His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, the Father of the House, you are warmly welcome to church. Psalm 100 verse 4 says that we should enter God's gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. And so this morning, we are about to enter and join the main live feed in service as we bring thanksgiving and praise and adoration unto our God and our King. Be blessed as you join us this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
to God, say to him, Kone, 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 Can you sing sing to me? Kone, Lord, Kone, Baba, Hey, in the 
your hands together and give the Lord praise. You believe the Lord has power to do all things, to change all things, to transform all situations, then put your hands together and give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. On behalf of our Papa, the Archbishop Nicholas and Cam Williams will welcome each and every one of us to this morning's special service. Amen. For those of you joining us online, you are equally welcome. Please go out of your way. Welcome somebody to this service. Give them a high five. Tell them our God has power to do all things. And tell them your miracle is on the way. Hallelujah. You receive their greetings. You receive their prophecy. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a victory shout. And you may be seated. Before you are seated, for those of you who haven't noticed, Papa is in the house. Shall we stand? Put your hands together. Let's thank God for bringing our Papa safely to us. Whoa! Hallelujah! Last week, 
a group of people met me out there. They said, please tell Papa wherever he is, we have missed him. He should come home. <laughs> and thank God our Papa is in the house. Please be seated. Let's welcome the choir to lead us in a special song. The next voice you hear will be no other voice but the voice of our Papa.
together. You can't clap without saying something. Say something. Turn to somebody and say, say something, say something. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, choir, Elsie, everybody. Put your hands together. Thank God. Your clapping, your praise is low energy. Give me high energy, high energy. Hallelujah. With your hands lifted, say, Heavenly Father, let your word have a free course. Among us, home and abroad, online, domestic and external, let your word have a free course. Like never before, I pray. In the name of Jesus, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Put your hands together if you believe that and give him praise. Oh, your clapping is still low energy. Hallelujah. You may be seated in heavenly places all across the nations. It's good to be with you. Glad to be back at home. There is nowhere like home. Amen. Hallelujah. I was meditating and preparing to preach and to teach on the importance of community community it is said that during the time of the pandemic that loneliness was one of the things that took so many lives than the COVID-19 that so many people died prematurely out of loneliness and God never intended that man should be alone not just about marriage but we were never made by God to be an island to ourselves. We were fearfully and wonderfully made to be interdependent and connected to one another. You never know the importance of community until you've had everything you think is so important. There are people who think that everything about life is about money and is about power. So they go out of their way. And they acquire wealth. They make money. And they take power by force and by all means. Thinking that having power and money is all that life has to do with. And after having all power and money, they realize when a time and a moment comes when they are sick. They are in a critical condition and money and power can't save them. And they realize the importance of man and community and humanity they never had time for. So, looking at some of the activities we have this week coming on with our business and professionals community, if you're a business man or woman, a professional you haven't registered, it's so very important, they'll put it on the screen. Please register. Be part of the community because the community will only be there for you when you've been there for the community. They'll never be there for you if you were never there for them. And that is some of the strongest things you see across the world today, even in our country, the Lebanese community, the Indian community, are very strong people. The Chinese community, all across the nation, you find Chinatown, Chinatown, Chinatown. The Indians, the Arabs, the Jews, they are everywhere. They form a strong community. And that makes them a force to reckon with. Jesus said every country, every house, and every nation divided against itself or a kingdom cannot stand. The earlier you and I realize, ladies and gentlemen, that God is wiser than you and I, the better a people will become. Whatever our reason is for not being part of a community, is deception, pride, and arrogance. There will come a day and a time in all of our lives when you have need of community. And if you haven't taken time to invest and commit to community, when you have need of them, which you will one of these days, they'll never be there for you. So please take time 
especially in these times when you are good, you're looking, you're sitting pretty. You have some deep pockets, well connected, favored. The lines are falling for you in pleasant places. These are the days and moments to care about others. These are the days to show commitment to others. So I was just meditating to come to you in this area of the importance of a community. Once in Germany, I went to Munich and I, I saw Hitler's head office where it all began. Interesting things. And I saw the king's palace, 137 guest rooms in the palace of the king, the then king, 137 guest rooms. And he's standing there. Men have built and died and gone. And I looked at all these guest rooms, fantastic buildings. But they are gone. Nobody lives in anymore. Stand as monument. And you know, all the things we are building today, you leave it all. And I don't know how you'll be remembered. So please, don't make life here everything. And don't lean on the arm of flesh. Don't believe you are good and you are okay, you are sitting pretty. It's a deception. Greater ones have come who had more than you and I and have disappeared from the face of the earth. And their mansions are standing and people don't even know that they ever lived or existed. So let's live and do right by others. Go ahead. As I was meditating, the Holy Spirit impressed on my heart. A scripture I preached many, 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 many years ago. It never came into my mind. And the Lord, by the Spirit, reminded me of a situation I had many years ago. About 50 years ago, I had an accident. And it was a very bad accident. Many people died. The truck somersaulted into the valley. And I screamed, Jesus! And a hand, an invisible hand, picked me from my shoulders. It carried me literally from the valley at Bolgatanga and placed me on my feet. And I survived. I never understood it. And the Lord reminded me, and he said, son, I have sent my angels from the days of your mother's womb when they performed a DMC and took your twin. I preserved you. And at that accident at Bolgatanga, my angel came again and rescued you from that which could have destroyed you. And I will not leave you until you have performed my heavenly calling and mandate to the letter. Say yes. And the Lord began to emphasize something very, very strong to me. A very powerful scripture that we take for granted. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Who delivered us from so great Underline the death. word deliverance. The God you and I serve is a God of deliverance. He's a God that delivers. Turn to somebody and say, he delivers, he delivers, he delivers. Yes, he does. Yes, he delivers. And look at, look at the ways by which he delivers. Go ahead. Who Deliver delivered us. us from so great a death? From so great a death. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, hearing the sound of my voice, that you have been delivered from something? Yes. Sitting here, looking pretty, as you are, you've been delivered from something. And if you believe that, put your hands together and give him praise. That he's delivered you from something. The only reason why you are still breathing 
then you are still alive today under the sound of my voice hearing me is because you have been delivered from something he delivered you from something that's why you are still sitting here pretty put your hands together if you believe that and say something open your mouth and say something say thank you go ahead who have delivered us from so great a death uh -huh. and, and death deliver so look at it number one he delivers he delivered and he does deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us so understand that he delivers he delivered past tense he does deliver present tense yet he shall yet deliver future are you hearing me oh you didn't hear me you didn't get it you know it took me it took me hours to get it i was just sitting there in my hotel in munich and uh, and uh, and the holy spirit just kept on emphasizing and impressing this scripture on my heart over and over and over and over and over again then suddenly the light turned on and i got it he shall yet deliver he shall yet deliver he shall yet deliver and i started thinking about the unrest across the nations what happened in 90 days in rwanda how a group of irresponsible people just got up and thought that they could just talk create violence and strife and conflict and did not know the consequence of their action and how one million people died and the world stood by indifference and allow so many lives to perish and i started thinking about liberia Celerion, and what's going on in israel in gaza in the middle east the bombing going on from iran to israel and started thinking about the violent speeches in ghana and across the nations the unrest the fears then suddenly he came to me he shall yet deliver he shall yet deliver come on if you believe he shall yet deliver put your hands together and say something somebody he shall yet deliver the world is becoming fierce there is a feeling and a sense of perplexity powerlessness and hopelessness there's an anxiety a fear and a worry all across the nations of what could possibly happen to the nations of our world but some trust in chariots and others trust in horses but we shall remember the name of the Lord our God if you believe it put your hands together say something say something <laughs> hallelujah my job and assignment is to remind you is to remind you whoever you are Whatever you are, irrespective of the color of your skin, your upbringing, your experience in life, my assignment this morning is to remind you that the God you and I serve delivers. He delivers. And He does not just deliver past tense or present, He yet delivers. He shall yet deliver from any other fear that is ahead of us. It does not matter what the contradiction is. It does not matter what the enemy have said. It does not matter what the projections are. It does not matter what the controversy is. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to announce to somebody. I don't know who I came to speak to, but I came to talk to somebody that he shall yet deliver you. He shall yet deliver. If you believe he shall yet deliver, put your hands together say something <laughs> who delivered us from such a great death who does deliver in whom we believe that he shall yet deliver that is my message you got to believe that he will yet deliver he did not lift you up to bring you down he didn't teach you to swim for you to drown. He didn't bring you that far to leave you alone. He did not make you to unmake you. The God who delivered, does deliver, shall yet deliver from all your fears, your worries, and anxieties. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say something, say something. 
Say yes. Say amen. Say I believe. Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the, are afflictions. the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Underline the word he delivers. The God you and I serve is a God of deliverance. He said many, not few, not few. And he didn't say many are the afflictions of the sinner or the unrighteous. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, somebody say but, 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 but. Yes, sir. The other day David said in Psalm 3, he said, he said, Lord, many, many, many are they. Many are they that have increased that hate me. They are doing pretty well. They are sitting pretty. Deep pockets. Doing very well. They don't like me. They hate me. They trouble me. And yet they are increasing. And sometimes it's like, God, what's going on? How come you are holding your peace? You see what is going on. You, do, you are doing nothing. And they have the audacity to go to the audacity to go beyond just the fact that they are even doing well and better than us. Priding themselves in whatever they have, that they are better than us. To go to the extent by daring to say that there is no hope for us. That even God cannot help us. Do you know that a time comes when people so believe them, they are themselves. They so believe power. They so believe wealth and money and connection that they've made it. They are untouchable. You are joking. Time changes. It's just a matter of time. I have seen untouchable people in my life. I've seen people who were untouchable, very powerful people in this nation, across the nations of the world. And I saw them over the years losing power and losing their defenses. And I looked and I said, is that the man? Is that the woman that was untouchable? What has become of them? And I saw them when they laid in state and when they could not speak a word and they died. And I said, is that the same person who was so powerful and untouchable and had no humanity and regard for God and for humanity? And I learned and took a lesson from there that as you live, be humble. Don't lose your humanity. No matter how wealthy you become, no matter how powerful you become, don't lose your humanity. It is something I learned when I was at Dubai. I was in Dubai a few weeks ago, breaking my fast with some of the sheikhs of the ruling family. And I saw wealth and money, but I saw humanity. I saw how people can have wealth and have money and still be human beings and still be humble. And still have no arrogance about them. And realizing that we are all human. That you can have power, money, wealth. But what matters is humanity. That is powerful. Many are the afflictions. And David said, he said, for they have said, apart from the fact that they have things I don't have. They have connections I don't have. They have influence I don't have. They have liquid. Everything is going for them. And I'm struggling to even have hands meet. They are still not satisfied with the fact that they are better than I in their own eyes. Yet, they have concluded that even God in whom I trust cannot help me. They believe that they've, they, they have all the power to determine the outcome of my circumstances. They believe that whatever they say happens because they've, they've seen so much going for them that they can determine my circumstances and the outcome of my situation. And David said, it is not yet over. He said, but, but. Whenever you read the scripture and you see but, it means it's not yet over. It's not yet over. It means don't make any conclusion yet. It means you don't have the last word. It means you don't determine the outcome. Somebody above you determines the outcome. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but. For, 
Many have said, there is no hope for me in God. They have determined, predicted, projected what shall become of my future. But, but, somebody talk to me. Somebody say, but, but, but. Ah, uh, somebody say, but, but, but. Clap your hands and say, but, 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 but. He said, but. What does the but mean? It means, hold your peace. You don't have the final say yet. It means you don't determine the outcome of my circumstances. It means it's just a matter of time. It means time changes. It means hold your peace. That's it. And he said, but, but, look at verse 3. He said, but thou, but thou, but thou, Psalm 3. He said, but thou, but thou, but thou. Oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Are you hearing me, somebody? Um, my head may be down today, but don't think that is the end of it. You are joking. You are joking because you didn't choose me. You didn't anoint me. You didn't call me. You were not there when God chose me. You were not there when I was called. You were not there when I was anointed. Are you here? You don't know the kind of stuff I'm made of. Are you hearing me, somebody? Put your hands together. Say something. Somebody say something. Who delivered us from such a great death? Who does deliver? Who shall yet deliver? Threefold deliverance. He delivered, he does deliver, he shall yet deliver. One of the reasons why we panic whenever we face new challenges, and it happens to all of us, I have forgotten his deliverances in the past so many times before, and I believe that there was a reason why he was reminding me of this because there come a time where you sense all these threatenings. You, you feel like people are conspiring and they are imagining evil. And you can sense negative vibes on energy. You sense this evil energy all around. You can feel it. You can sense, if, you are, if you're a spiritual person, you can tell, you can sense that people are imagining evil of you all over the place. And the Lord just by the Holy Spirit assure me and say, my son, my son, my son, have I not delivered you in the past? Have I not shown you my grace and mercy? What else do you want to know? Have you not seen the, the, the rising and the falling of so many great and mighty? So many great and mighty. There's, there's somebody here who mentioned the name. Years ago, I was going through some serious crisis. Serious crisis, and I'll go to her house. She was then up there, and I'll talk to her about my situation. And she had a way of talking to me and comforting me. That these things, and it was scary, very, very scary in those days. Very, very scary. When you just couldn't talk like today. And I thank God she's still here. And she knew a lot about the challenges I had in those days. She was so helpful, so comforting. And I thank God, she's still standing. She's still here. Many have come and gone. People that were powerful than her have risen and disappeared from the face of the earth. And she's still here, cool and quiet. Still here. Because she learned to trust in God. And, and I can never forget her. I never forget this lady. Never forget her. Because she was always there. And when I was down, and discouraged, I will go and sit down with her and we'll talk. And she was always comforting, understanding that time changes, young man, time changes. And I've seen the mighty, whose name were fierce in those days. You couldn't even mention their name. You are afraid and scared you'll be picked up. People went to poison and to lie on others for favor. And I thank God that she's still around. Come with me to Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning Look at the word again, deliverance again. He's able to deliver. That is the God you and I serve. He, this, this word deliver, he, he can rescue. He can snatch. He can pull you out. 
Are you hearing me, somebody? I don't know who I came to talk to. And I don't know who is in a situation and dealing with the situation. But I came to announce by the word of the Lord that God shall yet deliver you from the situation. Because, you know, sometimes it's like, God, how long, how long? You've delivered me. You, you, you still deliver. But how long does it take? How long will, you, will it take? How come I keep on finding myself in these uh, battles or uh, uh, unfavorable conditions? I was telling them when we came to pray that when I live in America, I remember two years of my life, I was in deep pain and, and agony when I was betrayed by a young man, very, very gifted, very gifted. Bishop James introduced to me, very gifted young man. And I learned a lesson that gift is not enough. That anyone gifted, anointed, without supervision and without accountability is a dangerous person and is an offspring of Lucifer. And for two years, I lost some great contacts I have in America that I introduced him to. I was undermined everywhere that friends and loved ones I introduced him to will not return my calls, won't deal with me. Apparently, he had poisoned them. And I said, but what exactly it is? What is it that I've done that he can poison these powerful people who are friends who have known me for many years? And for whatever reason, they believed him because he was so gifted that his gift had a way of overriding the ability to know their friend. And for two years, all I did was to pray in tongues and to sing just one song that kept coming to me. For two years, for two years, all I did was to pray in tongues. And every time I prayed in tongues, big song came forth for two years. And at the end, he died. I didn't touch him. I did nothing. He died with his gift, a very terrible death. The people who hijacked him were interested in his gift. They weren't interested in his future. I was interested in his future. I was interested to give him an inheritance because that is the rules of fathers. Those who hijacked him were just interested in using the gift for their benefit, but they were not interested in his future. Go ahead. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out and of that And he will hand. deliver us. He's able to deliver and he will deliver. It, it, you see, you need to get to a point in your work with God that irrespective of where you are and what you go through, I, I learned not to react anymore. I, I used to react to a lot of things, but I have learned not to react anymore. I listen. I, I, I stop reacting because I know in whom I have believed. Amen. I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded. I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed into his hands against that day. So I don't react anymore. When I see people reacting and making noise and, and shouting and screaming, I look at them and I feel very sad for them. I feel sad. I feel sad for them because I've seen a lot. Hear me. If you study history, if you study history, you'll be humble. That's true. I'm telling you. If you study history, you'll be very, very humble. People who are arrogant and very prideful in life don't know anything about history. But if you study history, as I walk and I looked at the head office of Adolf Hitler, and study how he came in there to Munich and how he began his mission to slaughter all the Jews and how powerful he was. And now he's no more. 
as I look at the Saddams, the Gaddafis, the empires of Rome, and I look at the Egyptian kings, the civilization of Egypt. Yes, sir. And I look at the Babylonian Empire, the Grecian Empire. And I was in London a few days ago. And if you look at Britannia ruled the waves, the power of Great Britain. And how nations dominated other nations. Yes. How France invaded other nations. How America had to step into the war. How Russia and China had to step in. In wars that were unnecessary because people were so powerful that they wanted to show their military strength and power. And how at the end everything came to a halt and men became ordinary men. And they realized that power and military might is not enough. It humbles you. You begin to think. You begin to walk very humbly. You begin to walk and you don't lose your humanity. And you realize that you have an opportunity in life to do good or evil. And what you do will determine how you are remembered. I don't know about you. But when it's all said and done, I want history to treat me fairly. I don't want history to treat me unfairly. And no matter what you do in life, whether you like it or not, history will judge you wrong or right. So do right by others. Put your hands together and give him praise. If you look at the war in Vietnam, in Vietnam, it was so unnecessary. But France went into Vietnam to show their military strength. Then China came in. Then America was brought into Vietnam. And if you look at the unrest that took place and how President Kennedy was assassinated and how another president had to come in and the forces of the United States going in there to be murdered and killed, they were, all those things were unnecessary. Please take your time and study history. It will make you very humble and you'll be very, you'll be very careful when you are making pronouncements because history will judge you and it will judge your children and it will judge your legacy and it will judge your descendants good or evil whether you like it or not it is written and you can't change what is written what is written is written put your hands together and give him praise <laughs> Daniel 3 28 then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted him. Underline the word again, deliverance again. The God you and I serve is a God of deliverance. He does deliver. Go ahead. Who have sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him. Okay, underline another word, trusted in him. So it's not just about being delivered, but you got to trust him no matter what. There are things I'm still trusting God for. I have not stopped trusting. There are things I'm still trusting him for up to now. And I know that deliverance will come. I know. I know that my deliverance will come. You see, the other day, Job said something. He said, for all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. Job 14, 14. There come a time when you have to trust him no matter what. He said, do, do. Though he slays me, yet will I trust him. Can you trust him no matter what the situation is? Can you trust him irrespective? Can you trust him against all odds? If you will, put your hands together, say something. You don't only trust him when he delivers you, but you trust him even in the mix, even in the mix of the crisis. Even when everything is against you, even when all odds, when everything is against you, you must learn to still lean on the everlasting arms and say, I don't understand what you are doing. I don't understand what's going on. I don't get it. I can't make sense of it, but I trust you. 
I trust you, oh Lord God Almighty. Oh God Almighty, my shield, my stronghold, my glory, the lift out of my head. I trust you, irrespective. Put your hands together. If you trust him, irrespective, say something. Listen to what the king said. He said, the God whom you trust. God whom you, who trusted has sent his angel and delivered his servants and, have, and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Hear me? Sometimes kings and very powerful people can say things and declare things and believe because a king has power that what they say must happen because they have the power. But they forget that they are limited. And what changes them is when you stand your ground against all contradiction and believe in a God that is a king of kings and is a lord of lords and is God of gods and is not mighty, he's not just mighty, but he's almighty. Are you hearing me? And a, a time came that the words of a king was changed. Today I declare that this coming week, let decrees be changed on your behalf. Let laws be changed. In the name of Jesus, let legislations and decrees be changed. In your favor, if you believe God, put your hands and say, change, change, change. Change in my favor. Change, Lord. Yes, sir. There come a time when the words of kings are changed. There come a time when the decrees of mighty ones are changed because we serve the almighty. Come on, go ahead and put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah, go ahead. Let's look at chapter 6, verse 20 to 22. And when he, had, when he came to the dead, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? You see, you see, there are some few things here you must learn. Number one, the first one, he said, the God whom you trust, whom you trust, irrespective of whatever situation you've been in, you haven't lost your trust in him. You still maintain faith in him. Has he been able to deliver you? Then in this one, he said, the God whom you serve continuously, continuously, it means irrespective, against all odds and contradiction. No matter what you feel, that you haven't given up on him, that you haven't stopped trusting, you haven't stopped serving. Though he slays me, yet will I serve him. And the king said, Daniel, I've been observing, I've been watching you. In the midst of it all, you have not stopped serving your God continuously. Has he been able to deliver you? And Daniel said, king, don't worry about it, don't even go there. He sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lion. Today I pray for you that the Lord will shut the mouth of your enemies this week that any mouth out there from the political to the economic and financial and social and religious scene that the Lord will shut their mouth if you believe it put your hands together say something continuously serve him irrespective tell somebody serve him irrespective Serve him against all odds. Yes, sir. No matter what, keep serving him. Keep serving him because he will come through for you. If you believe it, put your hands together and give him praise. Genesis 37, 20 and 21. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and mm -hmm. cast him into the, some pit. And we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Mm -hmm. And Reuben had it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, let us not kill him. Listen, no matter what the plan of the enemy is to take you out there, eh, God has positioned somebody to deliver you. 
I'm telling you. There is somebody you have no idea of position for your deliverance. God will raise an intercessor for you. God will raise a Reuben somewhere that will lift up a cry for your deliverance. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. They saw Joseph coming and they were very worried and troubled about his dreams. And in life, there will always be someone in the family who is the angel. There will always be a Joseph. There will always be one that carries a dream for the benefit of others and will always be the target of the jealousy, the hatred, and the envy of others. And they saw him coming and said, let's slay him and see what shall become of his dream and not of him, but a dream. Tell somebody, you, your problem is your dream, your dream, your dream. Your dream is bigger than you. Your dream is that impossible thing. Your dream is that thing that drives you and keeps you alive and awake when everybody is sleeping. Your dream is what distinguishes you from others. Your dream is what causes you to be a king maker, a game changer, a, a, a curse breaker. Your dream gives you that drive that others don't have. Your dream, your dream makes you outstanding. Your dreams makes you better than others. And they said, we slay him and see what shall become of his dream. And, and somebody, his elder brother, rose up, interceded. I pray that God will raise up a destiny helper for you. That God will raise up a Reuben somewhere where you cannot speak, where your voice cannot be heard. That the voice of one that is heard shall be raised and lifted up for you. Put your hands together and say yes, somebody. And Reuben said, no, 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 no. He's our brother. Let us not kill him. They cast him into the pit. First deliverance. He was delivered from premature death. An attempt of assassination before time. There are two ways to live here. You either die or you are killed. And say, I will not be killed. I will not be killed. Say, the day I depart, it will be on my terms. According to that which was determined in eternity before time began. Say, I will not be killed, but I shall depart in peace when that moment comes. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give him praise. Your, your clap offering is very suspicious this morning. Amen. So Joseph was delivered from premature death. He was delivered from being assassinated by his own, not by enemies. Sometimes a man's enemy are those of your own house. Sometimes the attack is not far from you. Sometimes it's so close for comfort. Sometimes you are surrendered, but I pray today and I command your deliverance. Deliverance from within and deliverance from without. Domestic and external deliverance. I pray that you'll be delivered from within and without. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say yes. Put your hands together, say something, say something. That was the first point of deliverance. He was cast into a pit that had no water. And the plan was to leave him in the pit to die. Then another deliverance came. Reuben said, Behold, this team of Ishmaelites, let's sell him into slavery. That was the second deliverance. I'm telling you, God has set in place the process of your deliverance. It's already in place. He knew your situation before you were born. He knew you would be in the situation you find yourself in right now. And I tell you, there is no temptation that has overtaken you but such as is common to men. But God is faithful who with every temptation will make a way of escape. I declare that you will find a way of escape this week. Your children will find a way of escape. There is a way out. I command a way out. Say in the name of Jesus, a way out, a way out. Put your hands together, open your mouth, say something. A way out, a way out, a way out. 
I see you coming out of their traps. You will not be a victim. You will not be a casualty. You are a survivor. You are a victor. You are more than a conqueror. You are coming out of that situation. If you believe it, give me some high energy clap offering and praise. Hallelujah. Say yes. So he found himself in the house of Potiphar, a five-star general in the land of Egypt. Then the wife set his eyes on him and said, young man, I like the way you smell. You're good. I need some fresh blood and energy. My husband is old. I'm tired of old blood. I need some freshness. I want to feel alive again. So come in here. And Joseph said, no, 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 no. My blood is not for your kind and your type. <laughs> come on, somebody. And Joseph said, I know that my redeemer lives. I know where promotion and helps come from. It doesn't come by compromising one's purity, holiness, and sanctification. It does not come by compromise. Because whatever you compromise, you will eventually lose it. Whatever you gain in life through compromise, you will eventually lose it. I'm telling you. That's why it's always good to wait, to wait. But it hurts to wait. It's painful to wait, but wait, wait. Because when your moment comes, you laugh the best. Go ahead and give him praise, say something. Joseph said, Joseph said to his master's wife, he said, woman, I know you are powerful. I know you can get him to do anything, but this one, this one, you can't help me. This one, it has to be God and God alone. God and God alone. And he was cast into prison. He was there for many years, forgotten by everybody. Did not exist. There come a time when you are forgotten and you don't exist anymore. And no one remembers you. But during that time, God is working for you in the shadows and behind the scenes. Are you hearing me? Whenever, whenever you feel like nobody, nobody knows you anymore. You are disregarded, disregarded, dishonored, rejected, forsaken, looked down upon. And even people you raise are, are promoted and elevated and it looks like you are finished. Don't believe that. In those moments of loneliness, being all alone and being disregarded and where nobody rem remembers you, those are the moments that God is working. He's working on your behalf. He's working in the shadows. He's working behind the scenes. He's preparing you for a greater comeback. And your comeback will be greater than your setback. Somebody put your hands together. Say something. Joseph was forgotten. Kept in prison. Disregarded. Nobody remembered him. He was finished. The stone that the builders rejected. Where is Joseph? Oh, he's in prison. He's done. He's finished. Have you not heard? Have you not been told? Didn't you read the headlines? Breaking news. He attempted to rape the five-star general's wife. Yeah. There come a time when you can be character assassinated. There come a time where you can be stigmatized and you become a proverb in town. Where you are judged by the court of public opinion and men write you off and give up on you and say you are finished. But may I submit to you that you are not finished until God says so. Say yes. Put your hands together and say something. Imaluka dula wasatalaha, e kadunda kasalan, wahandu kilika habazan, we antu kafasan, kilundu kawala hasalis. It's just a matter of time. Turn to somebody, give them a high five and say, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's just a matter of time. And Joseph was in prison and he was forgotten. 
written off. And one day, one day, ladies and gentlemen, there is always a day. 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 And if you wait, your day will come. And there came a day when the king of Egypt had a dream. He had a dream and his wise men could not help him. God created a need and created a condition where Joseph was needed. You know, there's extent to which you'll be rejected, but a day will come when there will be a need of you. When there will be a need of your skill and your gifting, where you will be needed. And on that day, it will be on your terms. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Say something. Say something. Say something. Say yes. And Joseph was in prison. No hope. Came from nowhere to somewhere. From nothing to something. From nobody to somebody. From a prisoner to a prime minister. Come on, somebody. Your future is in the making. Your future is in the making. Put your hands together and tell someone, my future, my future is in the making. Hear me. Hear me. You may not look like anything right now. Yes, sir. I've seen people. I've worked with people. And I've seen people. Who looked like they were going nowhere and they were nothing. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Suddenly, the ties turned in their favor. Suddenly. And I stood in awe. And I feared God. And I said, okay, Lord, I get the message. I will never disrespect. I will never dishonor anybody. Because you can never tell where anybody is going from here and what anyone will become tomorrow. God can turn the tables. I'm telling you, he can turn the tables. He can change circumstances. Somebody put your hands together. Say yes. Say yes. You know, the Bible said the other day, eyes have not seen. Eyes have not seen. Turn to somebody and say, you don't know who you are sitting next to. You don't know who you are sitting next to. Yes. That person eh, may look so simple and ordinary, but you don't know what the person is carrying. We don't, you don't know the destiny on that person. You don't know who that person will become tomorrow, a year from today, two years from today. Please, please don't dishonor. Please don't disregard anybody because you don't know. You know, Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela one day, he got up and he told his security, he said, take me to a restaurant. And the security said, Mr. President, we have to do a security check before we take you to any restaurant in town. And he said, you know something? I'm tired of all this security check. Just get me to a restaurant, let's eat. So they went to this restaurant. They sat down. Whilst he ordered his food, he saw this gentleman sitting opposite him. And he told the security, please ask that gentleman to join me for lunch. And the security said, no, Mr. President, you can't do that. We haven't checked him out. We don't know who he is. And he said, you, you know something? Forget about all your security. Let the guy come. So the guy came and joined Mr. President Nancy Mandela. He was very nervous throughout the time they were eating. Very, very nervous. After the meals, President Mandela said goodbye to him. And while they were leaving, President Mandela said to his security, why do you think the man was very nervous? You know what they said? They said, of course, he has to be nervous. You are the most powerful person in the whole of South Africa. You wield power. You can do anything. And he said, no. That wasn't the reason. President Mandela said, you see this gentleman? He said, when I was in prison, anytime I was beaten and I cried for water, he was one of those who would stand on a chair and pee on my head and asked me to drink my own pee. He never knew that the man he was peeing upon his head one day would become president of South Africa. And he was nervous, afraid. He was shaking because the table had turned. Power had changed hands. Money had changed hands. Oh, somebody, 
Somebody put your hands together and say the table stand. The table stand. Power changes hands. Money and influence change hands. Somebody say, oh Lord, let the table stand. Let power change hands. Let money change hands. Let influence change hands. But show mercy, oh Lord, to those who stay humble and treat others right, no matter what they have. The security people were shocked to hear what President Mandela said. They were shocked. They could not believe it. He said, yes, he used to pee on my head. One time, he invited a very wealthy businessman to his house for lunch. When the businessman came, he asked him, did you come alone or you came with somebody? So I came alone. So when it was ready for lunch, President Mandela went out and he saw the driver of the businessman and invited him to join them for lunch. To this businessman, he came alone. To President Mandela, the driver mattered. The driver was a human being. So he invited the driver to join them for lunch. When they finished and they were leaving, the driver said to his boss, boss, thank you for inviting me to join you for lunch with the president. And you know what the board said? He was sincere. He said, I did not invite you. It was the president that invited you. To, the pre to him, he came alone. To the president, he came with somebody. For those of you who come to church and you leave your driver and your security at the car park, because you are the only person who deserves the blessing of the Lord. They don't deserve it. They must wait in the car. And after you have received the blessing, you sit in the car and they drive you home. Because you the man, you the lady, you the woman, you the boss. It's just a matter of time. Time changes. Put your hands together and give him praise. You got to learn. You got to learn to forgive. You got to learn to let the past go. I have learned not to be bitter. I have a lot of regrets in life, but one thing I don't have is bitterness. I am not bitter about anything. I have learned to keep my heart pure. For blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I don't regret about anything. I have many memories in life but I've learned to keep my heart pure. I don't hold grudges. President Mandela one day said, at his point of leaving prison, he said, as I stand by the door to my freedom, I realize that if I don't let go my bitterness, my own forgiveness, and all that apartheid has done to me, I will walk through this door to freedom and I will still be in prison. I hope you are not in prison. I hope your past has not imprisoned you. I hope you are not living your life by the details of your past. I hope you've gone past your past. Stand on your feet. <laughs> Clap and say something, say something, say something. You know, if you want to stay humble, study history. And every now and then, go to the mortuary and attend funerals and go to the cemetery. And you see great people. You can stand there and say, how great thou art. And don't say anything. And you can say, how fool thou art. And they will say nothing. Until you get to a place where people praise you and it means nothing. Where they insult you and it means nothing. You are not alive. If you need the praises and the accolades of people. And if you are one who reacts 
to the praises and to the insults of people, you are still an amateur. You got to come to a place, whether they insult you or they praise you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Lift up your hands. I need no other argument. I need no other praise. It is enough that Jesus died. God of deliverance. This week, as declared by our Father, the Archbishop, may the God of deliverance show up on your case. Amen. We are still broadcasting live from the Prayer Cathedral at Action Chapel International, 37 Spintex Road, right from the call center. Amen. If at this moment you have decided to give your life to Christ, to join the Christian family, to come into the kingdom of God, then Let's pray a short prayer together um, if you are ready to give your life to Christ Jesus. Just say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your redemption plan for my life. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the most high God who was sent to come and to redeem me. Say that I believe and I confess him as Lord over my life. Say, Lord Jesus, please write my name in your book of life that I may be all that you have called me to be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. As you can see from the background, our call center is ready. You can call in based on the numbers on your screen, or you can visit our website, actionchapelinternational.net, and fill our membership form. We have a comprehensive membership program where we give you in-person pastoral care with counseling, deliverance, and coaching so please join us while we take you on a journey to help establish you in the things of god amen uh, this week god has been good to many people and so if you have a testimony you can also send your testimonies through on the numbers rolling on your screen at the moment we'll read your testimonies so that the world gets to see and to know what god has done and what god is doing in your life amen hallelujah so we are still in church church is still ongoing shortly will be time to give offerings and tithe if you have an offering and a, and tithes we'll have the various accounts and giving channels on the screen shortly where you can sow a seed into the things of God, you can give a tithe uh, into the house of God. According to Malachi 3.10, says we should bring all the tithes into the storehouse of our God. Amen. And as you bring your tithes, be rest assured that the Lord will open out the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. And that you rebuke every devourer for your sake and that your fields will be fruitful during its season and your seeds or your fruits from your your field will not go waste amen so please give on the channels on your screen at the moment amen praise the lord very shortly we will also be moving to give some overview of the books from our father offering amen still giving on offering amen still on offering so please give your offering cast your seed cheerfully amen cast your seed cheerfully and trust god that as you are casting your seed cheerfully that god by his mighty hand will turn your situations around and that 
your financial circumstances will change and be for the better. Amen. <clears throat> I believe that God is speaking to you regarding what you should give. Amen. Don't take it lightly. Give as the Lord is instructing you this morning. And I can assure you that a blessing will come your way very soon and you will have a testimony on your lips. Hallelujah. And so please give based on the channels on your screen. The giving channels are on your screen, mobile money. If you are within Ghana, the bank account details are there. If you're streaming from outside the country, the various giving channels and platforms are on your screen. And so please give. Don't go after you give. Service is still ongoing. Our Father, the Archbishop, will be back to pray for us, pray for travelers, pray for us for the week, and then um, give the benediction of God's blessing before the service comes to an end. So please give while we still go. Let's pray over your offering. If you have a seed to give, Heavenly Father, behold the seeds of your people, behold the offerings of your people as a sacrifice. Please look down pleasantly on it, O God, let it be acceptable to you this day. And Lord, pour them out a blessing for those bringing their tithes. They are bringing it in obedience to your word. And so we pray according to your word, O God, open the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they cannot contain. For your sake and for your word's sake, rebuke every devourer for their sakes, O God. And Father, establish their fields such that their fruits will come forth in its season in Jesus' precious name. Now do give as we join the service for a moment. We'll be back with you in a short time. Hallelujah. The steadfast love. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The Lord comes to an Before we take our tithes and our offerings, give me, give me Hebrews 7, 8. It solves every problem, all the arguments of whether tithe, first fruit is Old Testament or New Testament. This resolves everything. The tithe is still New Testament. Everything that went beyond the cross is still valid. Things that must end at the cross ended at the cross. And tithes, praise, worship, prayer, fasting, all those things went beyond the cross. And today, as we bring in our tithes, I want to pray that whoever you are, wherever you are, you will experience his faithfulness. You will experience his steadfast love. You will experience re new messes, new messes. Receive new messes. Be healed in your body, be healed in your mind. Be healed in your emotions. I command the healing and recovery of every organ of your body. I command every attack of the enemy on your mind, on your emotions, on your body to be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken. Every attack on your finances, let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let every delay on your finances be overturned in the name of Jesus. Overturned. Every attack, every time sensitive attack, I command it to be broken. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Genesis 49, 17, 
He said, Naphtali. He said, dear, let loose. Every treasures of yours held up. Every fortunes of yours held up. Every breakthrough blessing and testimony of yours held up this week. I command it to be let loose. I said, I command your money to be let loose. I command your finances let loose. I command your treasures let loose. I command your glory let loose. Your children let loose. Your grandchildren let loose. Your goings let loose. Your breakthroughs let loose. Your investment let loose. Your land and houses let loose. In the name of Jesus, I command your expectation let loose. Somebody say, let loose. Please come forward with your tithes and everybody take your offerings. Remember, whenever you sow, you get more than you sow. You put one corn in the ground, you get more than the one. So when you sow, believe, have an expectation that you get more than what you gave. For there is more blessing in giving than receiving. Please come forward with your tithes, your offerings. Pleasant assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, whatever. Please stand, lift up your tithe, lift up your offering. If you're giving electronically, lift up your phone as a point of contact. Let us pray. Father, by our seed this morning, we acknowledge you as our source. And we enforce the prophetic declarations of your servant. We activate the faithfulness of God. We activate the steadfast love of our God. That by our seed and our giving this morning, let, oh God, new doors be opened. Let embargoes be lifted. Let restrictions be destroyed. Let your power, oh God, be stirred up in our lives. Bless us. Bless the work of our hands. And make us a blessing to your kingdom and to this house. Let our heavens remain open. By our tithe, we ask that will, you, you will rebuke every devourer and waster. And let that which belongs to us come without fail. In Jesus' name, amen. Please drop your tithe, first fruit, special gift on the, offering, on the altar or in the drop box around the altar. May this week be your week of financial surprises. May this week be your week of financial testimonies. We command the release of new jobs, the release of promotions. We command international business doors open. We command the release of fresh business ideas. May God lift you up to new heights. May this week be your week of testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's welcome the choir as we give.
Hallelujah. Let's acknowledge God for the life of our Papa, the Archbishop. Amen. Whatever we do today, history will judge us tomorrow. Therefore, we should learn from history. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to acknowledge on behalf of our Papa, some special people among us this morning. If you are visiting us today for the first time, I humbly request you be on your feet for us to acknowledge you. Hallelujah. If you are visiting us for the first time, hallelujah, acknowledge them. Kindly pick your bags, your Bible, and come to me. Hallelujah. For a special message from our Papa, a gift from our Papa, please come to me. Amen. As we are acknowledging them, I also want to invite another set of people. You've been visiting us for a while now, and in your heart, you know that this is the community you want to belong to. I humbly also invite you to join us in the front. Hallelujah. Acknowledge them, acknowledge them, acknowledge them. I appreciate. Show them our love, how we do it in this house. Please. Let's show them how we do it. They are coming. They are coming. Praise God. Wonderful. Hallelujah. More are coming, more are coming, more are coming. Let's show them our love. This is beautiful. Amen. On behalf of our Papa, you are warmly welcome to Action Chapel International Prayer Cathedral. It is our prayer that the Lord will meet you as you expect him and the reason for which you came, it is our prayer for you that the Lord will encounter you. Amen. If you kindly turn about as a gentleman behind you, yes, in a suit, black suit, go with him. He will give, give you a message and a gift from our papa, and then you join us later in the service. God bless you for coming. Church, let's do it better. Amen. Shall we now turn our attention to the screen for the week's announcement? Thank you very much. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. An amazing time in church. Church is still ongoing. Amen. If this is your first time joining the stream, just give us a shout on our various social media platforms. Amen. So we get to know where you're streaming from. Amen. Um, also, for our membership, online membership, um, we have it open. Anyone who wants to be a member of Action Chapel International, be part of the family, you know, worldwide from wherever you are, you can fill our online membership form from our website, actionchapel.net, or call our call center numbers, which should be on your screen at the moment. And then we'll take you through the process of onboarding you as an online member. As an online member, we'll offer you an experience of in-person pastoral experience where you have access to counseling, deliverance, and coaching at a personal level. Amen. So you can call the numbers on your screen to have all these available to you. We are excited also about what God is doing in the lives of many people. And 
in this month god has given many members whether in person or online various testimonies if you have a testimony to share about god's goodness as well you can call our call center numbers or share it on our social media handles we'll pick it up and then we'll read it out for the world to know and to see that our god is a good god in line with testimonies we had one powerful testimony coming through from one of our sisters she says glory be to god five weeks ago a friend of mine was involved in an accident which affected her neck uh, i invited her to dominion hour uh, and on that day happened to be a communion service i told my friend to believe the declarations of our father the archbishop with her whole heart normally the sons of our father the archbishop stand by the altar to pray for people after the service and so we approached one of them who prayed earnestly for her and by the time we left the auditorium the pain in her neck for which she was wearing a collar the pain had disappeared glory to god and she left without neck pain hallelujah and so if you have a testimony to share please share it with us for us to read to the world secondly she tops up with another testimony secondly after dominion hour our father the archbishop declared that the veil is destroyed she received the word wholeheartedly and she said on that same day she went to the stadium to watch the african games and while she was standing in line a stranger she doesn't know just appears to her and gives her a vvip ticket to go watch the game amen tapping into this testimony this week may every veil over your life catch fire and may whoever needs to find you to show you God's goodness, may they find you in Jesus' name. And so she's saying thanks to God Almighty for these great testimonies and also to our Father the Archbishop for making such declarations and for our Father for making such services available where many of us can receive testimonies. Amen. This is a great house indeed. And so if you have a testimony to share, please feel free and share your testimonies with us amen service is still ongoing please don't sign off yet don't sign out yet our father the archbishop will be in shortly to pronounce the benediction and to pray for all travelers uh, that may be traveling within the week now let's turn our attention to some of the very powerful books our father the archbishop has written and has launched and so the books will be scrolling on your screen very shortly and on your screen amen and so just before we go to the books um our online membership forms are available online at actionchapel.net or call the call center numbers on your screen um, to be enrolled as an online member and like i said earlier we will offer you in-person pastoral experience where you have access to counseling so any counseling needs you have we will dedicate a pastor to you to help you with counseling amen if you have deliverance needs as well call the call center numbers we have ministers of god on standby to pray with you and to intercede and stand in the gap for you if you need direction on where you ought to be in life you need to be coached we have ministers and bishops available to help you with that and so please call our call center number at numbers on your screen or visit actionchapel.net to sign up for our online membership we'll be glad to get to help you in your walk to for you to experience god on another level the ultimate aim is that you'll be established and be firmly planted where you can stand on your feet as an overcoming child of god and so please fill the form the membership form if you have not yet filled it amen we'd like to have you on board as part of the family amen now let's turn attention to some of the amazing books our father has written which are live which are um, on uh, on sale at the moment so please let's turn attention to these books we'll be back shortly uh to queue in into the service for our father to bring 
us the benediction. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. It's good to be with you again. Thanks for tuning in. Enforcing the Prophetic is one of my latest books, part two, that I believe will impact your life. I was talking to one of my spiritual daughters the other day. She called me and said that uh, she reads her Bible every night before she goes to bed. And I said, that is good, but not enough. And she said, why? I said, reading or studying of the scriptures brings about understanding. But reading is not enough. After you have read, and you have acquired understanding, you have to put into action the understanding you have acquired. And that is why enforcing prophetic decrees is very, very, very critical and important. The Word of God is prophecy. The Word of God is the decrees of God. And they don't work until we proclaim it. So enforcing God's decree is proclaiming and declaring with your mouth what you have read. And the Bible said, I watch over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 1, 12. Just reading the word is not enough. You got to release it with your mouth and by your mouth. Faith is released by the mouth and not by your head. Not by thinking or imagining. It's by your mouth you release. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mightest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy way prosperous this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth so anytime you open your mouth you should be proclaiming decreeing and declaring what is written and what you have read so get the book enforcing the prophetic decrees of god the word of God are prophetic decrees. And God is counting on you and I to decree it, to decree it. Say something in Jesus' name by getting this book to bless you. It's good to be with you. Thank you for tuning in. I have with me some of the latest release of my books that I believe will impact your life. The snare of indifference simply has to do with lukewarmness, how the enemy has succeeded to cast spells on the church, to desensitize God's people, to cause us to slumber, spiritual slumber. These are not the days to slumber. These are days to be awake and alive and to be on our watch and our guard like never before. Please get this book. It will bless you to impact your life. It will break the snare and the spell. It will lift the veil of you and it will illuminate the eyes of your understanding and help you to avoid lukewarmness. Because being lukewarm, it's very dangerous. You are not hot and you are not cold. That's what simply it means by being lukewarm. You are not in and you are not out. It's very dangerous. There is no middle ground anywhere. You are in or out. This book, The Snare of Indifference, Lukewarmness. It shows you the signs of lukewarmness and how to overcome it. Get this book. It will impact your life. And as you do so, God bless you. It's good to be with you and thank you for tuning in. Today I want to talk to you about one of the five series of some of my books that have been released. Uh, the Bible said you err because you know not the scriptures. There is something about having understanding through the study of the books. This book, Beyond the Valley, that deals with mastering of faith the mastering of the test of love and the test of character 
and the test of faith I believe will impact your life. So many people struggle at the place of the valley, at the valley, at the valley. But the valley is not a bad place to be. Whenever you find your place at the valley, uh, realize that the next place after the valley is your journey to the top of the mountain. There is no way you can climb a hill or a mountain in life without going through the valley. So when you find yourself right at the place of a valley, in the air, on land and on water, in the name of Jesus. And now, any blessing and breakthrough and testimony of your people held up, we let it loose. As we put our hands down, we let loose every blessing. Come on, let it loose. Let breakthroughs loose. Home and abroad, far and near, domestic and external, we let loose. Let loose. Naphtali is a dear let loose. And he giveth goodly words. Let loose. Every blessing and miracle. Command protection, safety for all. In Jesus' name. Now, those of you who are businessmen and women and professionals, please give me a wave offering. Give me a wave offering. Don't miss Saturday. I'm looking forward to having you there. I guarantee you, if you don't make it, you'll be told what happened. And I don't want you to say, oh, I missed it. Don't miss it. Be there. It's a moment you cannot miss. This is critical for your own future. Register. Be in attendance. You haven't seen this kind before. I'm telling you. It will impact and change your life. Can I give you a hug? Do you feel me? Oh, some of you didn't want the hug. Come on, everybody do this. Amen? You feel me? I feel you too. The choir will be singing and you are blessed. And I love you. into your homes also if you need to reach us you can reach us on our call center lines which will be on your screen before the service ends you can also fill the membership form on our website actionchapel.net and we will be glad to have a conversation with you on a very personal level and so god bless you richly let's declare this together if you can put your hand on your right head just declare that the lord anoints my head with fresh oil my cup runs over surely god's goodness and his mercies shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in god's house forever and ever amen on behalf of his eminence the archbishop thank you for joining service today